you guys uh, make every bit of this possible. And the foresight of what we see and take place in our community is just absolutely great. Being outside these days and time, last year when I stood here, I was not a walker. I have now be <laughs> I began to take uh, to the trails. My daughter has pushed me to go with her in the mornings now to walk to Levy and then downtown. I ran into Harry the other day and he asked me, said, what are you doing out here? <laughs> I said, well, I'm having to get it in. I guarantee you, but it, it really is truly a blessing. Uh, I see, uh, the, to make you know the importance of this, I heard two or three people tell me today, man, John Bennett is out here today. This is really big. <laughs> and it really is, John. Uh, I appreciate everything that it took to make this all possible. The partnership with Berry College, the uh, excitement it brings to our uh, Sammy Rich and his staff to uh, dot all the I's across all the T's. It's just absolutely wonderful. And, and then of course my team, uh, Jamie Dawes, Randy, and Mr. Bojo, uh, Oh, of course, the county, Allison, and, and uh, Commissioner Wright, and of course, Mr. Jackson. And I see Faith Collins stepping up, coming down. But thank y'all so very much for this opportunity, and welcome today for a great addition to our community. Thank you so much. My name is Julie Smith and I'm Executive Director of TRED. And TRED is a very intentional um, acronym, if y'all are not aware, we are TRED Rome Floyd and the acronym stands for Trails for Recreation and Economic Development. So we were formed in 2012, um, so we've been together eight years, I've got a great team um, and very intentionally at the outset of when we were formed, we decided that we would be a public-private partnership. We all know, as Mayor Collins said, you know, things work better when we can work together. So we have a great relationship with the county. We have a great relationship with the city. And that's how we get things done. Some of y'all might remember that this was a 2013 SPLOS project. Um, Tread, in our kind of baby infant years, um, partnered with the city for this trail to be built. And y'all, I have to tell you, it's been seven years, but I think that this came at the best time ever. Trail usage over this last six or seven months during the pandemic has increased 200%. I don't know about y'all, but I'm, I'm sure that people would have walked Ridge Ferry, Kingfisher, Jackson Hill, GE, all of the beautiful trails and amenities that we have but there's something about being out here, getting out of your house with the same people you've seen, seen day in and day out, seeing new faces, seeing the, Doug, how many osprey have you seen out well, here? I don't know how many osprey, I saw 11 herons. 11 herons, the berry eagles come out here to feed in the lakes. So just the respite and the nature and the beauty and the seeing different things than your four walls at home <laughs> has been amazing. So I'm actually really grateful for the construction to have happened when it did, quite honestly. So let me just kind of keeping in theme of um, the acronym theme, um, I've come up with um, six points that trails so let's talk about what each letter to me, and maybe I'll educate y'all, and maybe if you go back and you're talking to somebody and they say, I don't understand why the city, the county, I don't understand trails. Why would they want to spend money on these things? Well, maybe some of these points will kind of stick in your brain and you can educate them and just say, no, no, no. Let me tell you why trails are important. So T, trails stand for transportation. Many of y'all know that the trails that we have in Roman Floyd County serve different purposes. This trail is recreation. Ridge Ferry Park, if you've been to Ridge Ferry at five o'clock on a weekday, it is packed. You've got the runners and the walkers and the dog walkers. Kingfisher Trail probably is not so much recreation. 
as it is transportation. Y'all, I mean, I know you know this, but not everybody is as lucky as we are to have cars. A lot of people depend on their legs to get to work, to get to places. So Kingfisher Trail is a very important transportation corridor for a lot of people. So trails are transportation. R, return on investment. When trails are built, there is typically a four to one return on that investment of those trails. That speaks volumes. There are no negative benefits economically when it comes to trails. A, attitude, mental health. You cannot have a bad day when you're on the trail. You come outside, you're in nature, you say hi to people, everybody's smiling. Nobody's frowning. You change. Your psyche changes when you're on the trail. You might have gone from bad attitude to good attitude. So mental health is huge when you're on a trail. That's a huge benefit. I, inclusive. Trails are free for everybody. Trails don't care about your gender, your socioeconomic status. Trails are inclusive of everyone. They're open all the time. Anybody can use the trails. L, lower cost, lower health healthcare costs. There's a study that for every $1 spent on trails, you are saving $3 in healthcare costs. You lower your blood pressure. Obviously, it has huge health impacts or benefits. You're lowering your carbon footprint. So lower everything. You lower your stress level. And then S, stewardship. As an organization, TREAD believes that we should be good stewards. Trails, green spaces, open spaces, we just believe that we have this earth, we need to be good stewards of the earth, and that's what trails also provide. So those are just a few talking points. Maybe you'll remember one to take back to people. Um, but also, let me tell you briefly about TREAD's goals. Um, one of our, our main goal is to connect all four colleges in Rome. And really our overarching goal is to connect community, is to connect people to each other and to places, to connect to downtown. We want to connect to Barry is almost connected um, when that connection point happens. Um, Shorter is essentially connected to the trail via the sidewalk and the levee. Um, our next goal, we are in partnership with the county for the Lindale Trail, so we're very excited about that. I can't wait for that ribbon cutting in a few years. That was a 2017 SPLOSS project that we partnered with the county on. That will um, take you from basically the end of Kingfisher Trail by the health department, go down abandoned Norfolk Southern Rail Corridor, three and a half miles, and will terminate in downtown Lindale at the train viewing station. So can you imagine? I can't, the people who are the praise for this trail that right now doesn't go anywhere has been overwhelming. So just think of the change and the magnitude of connecting to Lindale. So we're excited about that. So, and ultimately our goal is to connect to the Silver Comet Trail. Um, but overall, TREAD is working to connect community. Um, and let me just briefly mention my board members. Um, Harry Brock, many of you know Harry. He's here. Um, Jim Hunter, um, Strom Mole, she um, works at Darlington, um, Steve Gunther, and Mark Webb. So those are um, my TREAD board members and whom I can't, it really takes a village. So, um, but anyway, thank y'all for coming out. I appreciate it. If you want to learn more about TREAD or maybe how you can get involved, um, see any one of us afterwards. So now let me turn it over to Dr. Stephen Briggs, um, president of Barry College. Uh, I often enjoy a cup of uh, coffee watching the sun rise over the trail and over the Ustanau. Uh, this morning, the fog was rolling over the fields. Uh, it was pretty glorious. So I, I'm glad that you all get to enjoy some of the view that I've had for the last 15 years here. Uh, Barry College is pleased to be part of this SPLAS funded project. 70% uh, of the trail here is on Barry College land. And we were, providing, we were glad to provide those easements at no charge to the public. Barry makes much of its land available to the public for running, biking, hiking. Uh, and we do so because we are a permanent member of the community. 
Uh, we want this to be a place that is thriving, uh, a great place to live. So more than 200 students uh, at Barry right now are from Floyd County. And uh, many more residents of our community come first as Barry students and then stay here. So people sometimes uh, confuse Barry with public land. Uh, we are actually private property, as you, as you know. Uh, and we open up our property uh, uh, for all kinds of recreation, uh, including hunting. Um, even though we pay hundreds of thousands of dollars of tax on that land. So this is a part of our long-term investment into being a great place. And uh, we, we, uh, we are delighted that uh, people can use our land and that that builds goodwill for a long period of time. The pandemic has necessitated that we've been a little bit more restrictive uh, for the last four or five months. And we apologize for that, but uh, we do have to protect uh, our, our students uh, and our community uh, we do plan to open our property as soon as the circumstances change, and we do plan to add a connector that will link in just past the little, little cow pond on our property after you go across the bridge. Uh, we're going to add a connector that will take you up to uh, the traffic light at Highway 27 uh, across, and eventually you can connect to the Viking Trail. So it'll be a couple mile or so connection in, and then another five miles out to the mountain campus and all of the trails out there as well. So uh, we're looking forward to it. I think it was a dozen years ago when uh, Julie uh, came by the office. I, I know uh, uh, John was there at the, in those, some of those meetings. We pulled the maps out and we're looking at things. Uh, she was as excited and as dynamic about the project then as she is now. So uh, a long-term interest. We really appreciate your commitment and your patience uh, to, to get this done. Uh, it's a reminder of how long it takes for some great projects to come to completion. It's important that we take the long view on these issues. Think about the green median strip running down Broad Street and how that has transformed, that forward looking decision decades ago has really transformed uh, our, our downtown has led to its long term success. So some things which may be controversial in a moment, you look way down the road and you're like, oh my word, I'm glad they took the, I, I'm glad they had the courage to make that decision make that investment. Uh, in that regard, I want to thank uh, the mayor, uh, the city commissioners, Sammy Rich, for that same mindset as they approved the TAD request to support a new hotel two nights ago, uh, just as they were willing and steadfast partners in the Rome Tennis Center development that, uh, a few years back. They're now supporting further economic development through tourism revenues, which is for the long-term benefit of our community. 110 years ago, Teddy Roosevelt visited Rome, Floyd County, Barry College, and that day, on was Barry Schools then, uh, that day he described two kinds of people to the students, the lifters and the leaners. He encouraged the students to be the kind of people who made a place better, who carried their weight and then some. Be a lifter, not a leaner, was the original <clears throat> motto of the Barry Schools. I'm grateful to the city leaders and other leaders here in the community for being lifters. Good decisions, clear thinking, reaps benefit for decades. So lots of people have been walking this trail on recent weekends. I received a lot of texts and emails the last couple of weekends, pictures of my house, the president's house. Uh, people say, oh, I'm out in your backyard. So it, it's been fun. Thank you to all of you. Thank you to Trev and others uh, who have contributed to this project as lifters. Thank you, Dr. Briggs. Good morning. I'm Good morning. Sammy Rich. Have the privilege of serving as city manager, and it is great to be out here today. Some of you were probably here May of 19. I think it was the end of May. We were a little farther up, and it was a little dusty out here. So I got to ask, how many of you have actually walked this 1.8 mile section already? A lot of hands up. And if your hand is down, you don't know what you're missing. And I'll tell you, I have, I, one of the most exciting things about this particular trail for me is I'm seeing different people on the trail. And I don't know if we're importing people that are, that have heard about this, but it's just, there's a different, there's a different vibe. And who would have thought our, our biggest issue would have been, we didn't have enough parking for a trailhead, but that's been the reality here guys. And so that it's literally that. 
um, there's a lot of folks I want to take a moment to thank. Um, but just before we do that, just to give you some context, us in the government, we spend a whole lot of time looking at maps. And so we, we typically take for granted that not everybody else does. And so, but as was mentioned earlier, when you get on this trail, well, it probably feels like it goes to nowhere because that 1.8 miles is going to run you north and you're going to get up, if you've looked at these maps, you're going to come to Big Dry Creek. And so if you get there and you don't know the full story, you might feel this is somewhat anticlimactic. It was very beautiful. But to, to finish the story, what this trail seeks to do that we have, we've not had yet is to create a loop. And so when we start talking about a loop, you think about other places with loops like the Atlanta Beltline, for example. So if I'm downtown Rome and I get on the trail, to be able to go out and loop back around. And so that's part of the excitement. So when we get to the north end of this, we have to cross over Big Dry Creek, and then we're gonna snake up and around through Berry Family Land, and we will tie into the Our Merchant Connector just at the bridge. So if you can imagine tying in at the Our Merchant Connector, cross the bridge there, and then hang a right, and I'm behind State Mutual Stadium. And then I'm headed back downtown Rome just behind me, this section of trail, this is gonna connect you to the levee trail. So if I get on the trail there beside the Olive, not Olive Garden, oh, Charlie's, guess what? I'm gonna head north on that trail. Ultimately, we're gonna cross here. So our partners with Floyd County, they have grant money. They've been working what feels like a lifetime with our friends at the railroad because the railroad's just not in a hurry. But once the section that crosses under the rail bridge is complete, we will connect the trail here. So thus, this big grand loop. And then we start talking about where does that take us? Obviously, we've got bigger plans. We, we mentioned the Silver Comet. We'd love to have trail connectivity to our friends in Cave Spring and then on down to the Silver Comet. But then there's opportunities uh, to go north, to go perhaps to Chattanooga. And so it really gets exciting. If you've looked at the surface, um, if you, as you walk and you get a little closer to the river, you will notice this smooth asphalt becomes a little more grainy, and that's because of the, des the design. And you may have noticed it's porous asphalt. And so in the river buffer itself, the asphalt is, may look a little bumpier, but that's because it's like a sponge. And so when you pour water or rainwater on it, it's going to percolate through. So this is not only an awesome trail, but it's an environmentally friendly trail. So a couple of things I want to say. Uh, first, the, the 2013 SPLOS Committee, I know there's always, I see Alvin, I don't know who else is here that represented that SPLOS Committee, um, but having a little bit of vision to be able to take a risk. Oh, I see Barb, Barb Beninato, another another victim of our SPLOS Committee. It, it, again, not everybody wants us to fund trails. It takes a little bit of a bold statement, but guys, it doesn't get any better than this trail, and you're going you're gonna to know that when you get on it. Our Run City Commission uh, takes a lot of dedication to stand behind us. Spriggs Construction, Danny Spriggs uh, and his team, Tommy Smith, they did an awesome job working on this project. The weather was not always good, but they persevered. Um, as has already been mentioned, the, these great partners, Barry College, Dr. Briggs, Eddie Ellsbury, uh, their staff, We've got some city employees, our public works director, Chris Jenkins, our um, engineering services director, the guy in the back with the, the bank robber mask, Mr. Aaron Carroll. He was the project manager on this, so I guarantee you he got a whole lot of mud on the tires making sure that we got what we paid for to make sure this trail is, is all that it could be. And so with that, guys, I don't think you could have a prettier place in all of this community and I think that's one of the things, because as you heard Dr. Briggs say, he's now sharing that view, and it is. And I think that's part of this excitement, because now all of a sudden you've opened up a piece of Rome Floyd County that before now, really, unless you were at Angus, you probably weren't seeing it. <laughs> and so it's exciting. And so I would just say thank you again to all of our partners that have made this a reality. And now what we're really here for is time for chamber haircuts. <laughs> We're going to string up a ribbon, and here's the deal, guys. We always we always announce this. Everyone is welcome to come get behind the ribbon and get in on this picture. Only a couple of folks can touch the scissors, but we would love to have everybody come get on on the picture. 
because this is a community project. It's a community trail. And so with that, I would invite everybody, come on up and uh, let's get this ribbon cut. Thank you. Okay, on my count, Mr. Mayor. One, two, three.